Street. We're joined by financial expert Rob Black, as always, to dissect uh, what's going on here uh, with the markets. Rob, thank you for joining us this morning. Good to be here, James. Let's talk first about uh, unemployment uh, insurance. The latest numbers coming out this week. Tell me, what are you seeing and what does it mean to you? Not unemployment insurance, but first-time unemployment claims mm. came in roughly at 830,000. That's a high number um, compared to last year at 200,000, but it's a way better number than where we were in August at over a million. So Americans are still losing their jobs and it should be alarming if we weren't getting better, but we're not getting better faster. I think again, more evidence that uh, this is gonna be a tougher recovery than a lot of Wall Street analysts are thinking it should be. Our economy is runs on uh, jobs and low unemployment solves all problems. Yeah. We're still above 10%. We're still problematic to say the least. And there's not above 10%, just below 10%. Right. And I guess there is that disconnect that exists, right? Because when you look at Wall Street and, oh, they're, you know, meeting new record highs and you hear about those headlines, but Main Street and the small businesses where these jobs are really being impacted by the pandemic, it's, it's almost like a tale of two different stories. Yeah, I, I think that's fair to say. Um, and Congress has to do their job now. And it looks like some Republicans and Democrats got together and said, let's spend a trillion and a half. Last week, they were talking about a trillion, and the week before that, it was 500 billion. So they seem to be upping the number, and Donald Trump likes big things. So I think we're going to get a deal, and I think it's going to be more debt, but also it's going to help our economy. All right. Well, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, next item I wanted to chat with you about is Peloton. Um, yes. It, it seems to me it wasn't too long ago yeah, we were kind of talking about Peloton. Who can afford that? Mm -hmm. Is this really kind of a winner company? Um, I guess they're doing all right during the pandemic. Pandemic definitely helped as people quit gyms or couldn't go to gyms is probably the better way of saying it. What I kind of wanted to talk about in this segment is it's up 190% and Steph Curry has backed a company called Tonal and they're a fitness workout company that it looks like a mirror with some workout gear strapped onto it. And then there's a company called Zwift and Lululemon uh, invested in a company called Mirror. So Peloton is about to get competition big time. 90% uh, of uh, adults who exercise say, yeah, we may never go back to a gym and working out at home does interest us. Peloton is the apple of fitness equipment. Um, and they have a subscription service as well where you can get uh, a, a great instructor doing yoga on top of the Himalayas or you can get a, a cut ripped NFL player who can teach you how to like get core strength. Both of those subscription models are pretty attractive. And Apple Plus, um, Apple's going to need to copy it with Fitness Plus. Uh, so they're getting into the subscription model. Everyone is suddenly getting into it. And Lululemon is the best of the breed. Mm. Uh, know that competition's coming if you're an investor. And also just know that's a trend. That's something you can talk about at the water cooler day and look cool. Okay. Uh, did you know Steph Curry owns uh, part of a company called Tonal? It's like, yes, we're talking about Steph Curry again. <laughs> times are better. <laughs> Very good. All right. And speaking of uh, times getting better, I had my son come into of uh, the room yesterday and said, hey, dad, have you seen the new trailer for the Miles Morales Spider-Man game? And he played it for me. And then afterwards yeah. he said, uh, coincidentally, uh, it's best experienced on the new PlayStation 5, which oddly enough, pre-orders are happening. And I, I got the hit and I said, yep, nice try. I guess it's oh, the pre-orders <laughs> already sold out. They're already sold out. And um, that, that's frustrating because yeah. I was at dinner last night with my children and they're like, it's like, did you see the new uh, Sony PlayStation 5? And did you see the Miles Morales trailer for it and uh, Assassin's Creed and Fortnite, what it's going to look like on it? And I was like, let's let's pre-order one. So we went to Best Buy to try to pre-order. Gone. Nope. Gone. Sold out. GameStop yeah. sold out. It's going to be a $400 to $500 machine, $400 without a DVD player, $500 mm. with a DVD player. Um, there's not much more story there other than to say we're in video games during the pandemic and staying at home. I guess. There's a lot of big boy investments like Take-Two, Activision, Electronic Arts. NVIDIA, AMD. I mean, it's a serious, big business industry, even though it looks like fun in children's games, so no. to speak. Yeah, the console, uh, so wars are, console wars are real, man. If you haven't got one, you're not going to get one by Christmas. No. All right. Now I've, sold out. I've just been set up as being the worst dad ever this coming Christmas, but that's all right. He can learn to deal with disappointment. It's a life lesson. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> it's more real life, huh? Right. Thank real life with James. Absolutely. He'll thank me later. Thank you, Rob, as always, uh, for your time. And don't forget, you can ask Rob questions. Reach out to him. You can email him. You can find him on Facebook and Twitter.